Since 2005, Slavic Missionary Bible School has been focused on sending graduates to the mission field. This past summer, SMBS had the privilege of sending 10 groups to Ukraine, Russia, Mexico, and Cuba to minister for two to six months and share the good news of the gospel. Bakhmut is a city in the Chernihiv region of Ukraine with a population of about 20,000 people. The town is the cultural and educational center of the region and therefore has a very vibrant atmosphere. More than six months ago, a family of SMBS missionaries moved there to start a church and this summer, a team of new graduates were sent to assist them with missionary work. The team carried out a wide variety of outreaches. One very successful outreach was starting an English language course in one of the secondary schools in the city. Not only did young people attend, but older people started coming as well. These lessons opened up an opportunity for the students to share Christ with the residents of the city. Actually, when I first came here, I was very nervous about uh, working with the English program. I had no experience with it. But through that, I just learned how to trust God completely and depend only on Him, and He's been helping us with that. It's been a big success. We have a kids club going, which is really fun, um, in my opinion. We have two girls who are in charge of that, very happy girls. We also have two people um, taking care of English class, and uh, we have gotten the opportunity um, to kind of interest the mayor's daughter to come to English class and which has been a big blessing to us because now uh, she's one of our very good friends, one of the people we know very much. I feel very blessed. We're trying to get a youth club going because we're just uh, gaining more more friends, especially people who are young from about like 16 to like 20-ish, 22-ish. They are interested in us and they do want to hang out with us more and more. The group also organized a children's club three times a week and around 30 kids regularly attended. To go along with the kids club, the team held a Christian camp for children, and on the last day, the parents were also invited. There was a very festive and family-like atmosphere, and the event ended with colorful fireworks. Most importantly, all those who came that day were able to hear that the Word of God can bring joy into every home. In today's society, people are often focused on themselves, and very often groups within the population can become isolated or alienated from the society around them. In order to help such people in their town, our missionaries visited those who live alone, like the elderly, the sick, and the needy. They would read them the Bible, help with housework, or just encourage them with a kind word. There's a woman here who has been paralyzed for more than 30 years. We started visiting her from the very beginning. Every week we would come to see her, to read the Bible with her. She loves God very much, although she can't walk because she is blind. We shared with her many things about God. Today we came to help her clean her home. She lives in very poor conditions. We just wanted to serve her in this way. The year 2013 marked the 1,025th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity to Ukraine. This occasion was celebrated by many events across the country. Our missionaries saw this as a perfect opportunity for evangelism and organized several meetings at local city centers around the region. The events included music, testimonies, and the sharing of the gospel. By the end of the program, everyone had the opportunity to get a free New Testament, as well as CDs with music and sermons. The missionary group continued to hold further events in 11 other neighboring communities. Over 500 people had the opportunity to hear the gospel, and about 100 of them expressed interest in learning more about Christ. Although the work in Bakhmach began less than a year ago, there are already Sunday services being regularly held in the city. This past summer, SMBS continued its successful collaboration with the Ukrainian Christian Mobile Clinic a volunteer organization that offers free medical services to people in villages and towns. Each summer, highly qualified doctors devote their vacation time to go from village to village, helping those with medical needs. The team included an eye doctor, a surgeon, a family physician, a trauma physician, as well as many others. The mobile clinic is also equipped with an x-ray machine and a laboratory. After seeing the doctor, each person who came had the opportunity to sit down with a spiritual counselor who told them about Christ 
and about how God is able to heal not only their bodies, but their souls and hearts as well. When people were leaving, they stopped by our table and thanked us for being there and for serving them. People were noticing that the people here were very different. The physicians were very pleasant. I heard one lady say after she saw the doctor, I could barely walk on my way here. Now I can walk straight. She was very hunched over when she came, but she walked out much healthier and very happy. I believe that we not only treated their bodies here today, but God healed their souls as well. In 2013, the Mobile Clinic Ministry planned to have two outreaches. The first was in the village of Lushnitsi, which is located in the Kiev region. At first, everything began smoothly, and permission was obtained in advance to conduct the clinic. Unfortunately, the chief medical officer who gave the permission was replaced just weeks before the outreach began, and the new officer agreed to have the event only if there would be no evangelism. As a result, the local church pastor stepped forward and offered to hold the clinic on his private property. Thankfully, through all the obstacles, the clinic was able to operate. During the three days, 115 people came for medical treatment, and each one had the opportunity to hear the gospel, from the very oldest to the very youngest, and many of them prayed to accept Jesus into their lives. God blessed us very much. We met many people who simply trusted their lives to us. These stories of their lives, we were able to fellowship with them. Many people accepted Jesus Christ, and this is the most important thing. Even if just one person accepted Jesus Christ, it would have been worth all of these people to gather from all over the world, America, Germany, Ukraine, to come to this place, to this village, and give all they have to help these people and to lead at least someone to Christ. After the clinic was over, one of our teams stayed in the village and continued to work. They visited those people who expressed an interest in learning more about God, worked with children and held the children's camp, in fact. We are happy that God sent us here because I see that even the smallest things that we do here, there is a purpose and it brings a blessing not only to the local church, but we have been learning a lot as well. We visit a lot of people here. We visit people who have come to Christ, people who are Orthodox, who are sick, or even just elderly. I think that even if they don't start going to church right away, a seed is definitely being planted. I came here with my family, with my wife and two kids. We came to Ukraine, Bolshansi, to serve these people and this village. Unfortunately, at the last minute, the second medical outreach in the town of Znaimenovka in the Dnipropetrovsk region was forced to be canceled. Just like in Bloznitsi, officials were not against the medical aid itself, but against the evangelism that takes place along with the event. In the village of Beliki, in the Poltava region, One Way Youth Club, which was started by students in 2012, was reopened again. The club provides young people an alternative to alcohol, nightclubs, and worthlessly wasting time. The club has a clear goal and structure. It offers not only sports, drama, educational videos, but also open discussions about spiritual matters. The club participants are between the ages of 13 and 20. The missionaries reach out to each young adult individually so that they can tell them about God on a personal level. We lead a youth club under the name of One Way. We work with the local church, and our main goal is to show the youth positive, healthy fellowship and lifestyle. We have evenings of fellowship, evenings of games, sports days, and we show films. And through these, we try to make friends with the local youth and slowly share with them about God, about Jesus Christ. I was introduced to these young people, to this group. All these young people were very talented. I enjoy talking to them, watching them, and I am happy to be here with them. Besides working with the youth, the team also devoted a lot of time to interacting with children. They held a talent show, taught weekly Bible lessons, and started an English club, which 30 people attended. The missionaries in Beliki quickly gained respect among the locals. They visited the elderly and the sick and demonstrated many acts of kindness. They saw that you didn't have to do much to be a blessing to others and to bring honor to God. 
First thing that I notice here is that people have nothing to do, and the fact that they have nothing to do, they find various things to occupy their time. I talk to many people, many young people, and they want to know how to change their lives, how they can help, even in their village. And I was very encouraged by this. Our whole group was inspired. I also noticed their open hearts. They were very open to us. It was truly amazing to see young people who didn't know God and even rejected Him at the beginning of the summer now change their lives and begin to read the Bible. At this point, there's a great need for missionaries to work in Baliki all year round so that through this ministry, more people could come to obtain salvation. Children's ministry is one of the main ways that missionary teams serve. In cities and towns, children are often left to fend for themselves. Instead of learning traditions and values from their parents, they learn terrible habits on the streets. The situation is particularly difficult in rural areas where alcoholism, violence, and indifference destroys many families. Therefore, this year, SMBS decided to form a separate group to go from village to village, which concentrated solely on organizing Christian camps for children. This required a lot of effort and perseverance. Physically, it was very difficult because the missionaries didn't have a lot of time for rest. They were either running a camp, on the road, traveling to the next location, or preparing for the next project all the time. They would often spend the night in tents, cars, or just on benches. Over the course of two months, this group put together seven children's camps. Many of the children who attended were from orphanages and from low-income or single-parent families. The missionaries tried to show each child as much love and attention as possible. And what our group mo mostly focuses on is music aspect, having kids express their um, creativity, talents through skits and songs, and uh, we have crafts and sport, but the most important thing, we try to show them our love, uh, show God's love through us, and to show it to them. The team carefully developed a special program for each village in town. The parents' nights where mothers and fathers were invited for family contests and skits, were an important part of the camps. There was such an atmosphere of joy and unity. The best part of the camp was at the end when the parents would express sincere gratitude and share testimonies about how their children's behavior had changed for the better. It was truly the work of God. The ministry in Znaimanovka, Nipipodrolskaya region continues. It was first started in 2012, and this summer, SMBS graduates were sent there again. The group this year did everything they could to continue and build on the work of the previous year's group. They held various evangelism events, visited the elderly and the sick, and organized an effort to clean up the city called Clean Hearts, Clean City. They also held regular Sunday services and home group meetings on Tuesdays. In addition, on Thursdays, they organized a small group meeting for girls, where in a very casual and comfortable atmosphere, they could talk about topics that concerned them. They could also pray for each other and support each other in different ways. This ministry has a special place in the heart of the residents there. Also, every Friday, the group would organize bonfires for the youth and had time to play with children on Saturdays. The group there is currently planning to start a Christian youth club for which there is already a building. Last year there was a group who served here throughout the whole summer. Then a small group of missionaries stayed to serve all fall, winter and spring. In the spring we conducted many evangelical services in schools, big tent evangelisms. We were seeing the first fruit of the church. We see how slowly the amount of people being saved is increasing and the, God's Word is being fulfilled that the Word of God is going to reach all corners of the earth in Znaminovka as well. So much work has been done over the past year. Not long ago, land was purchased to build a house of prayer and the paperwork is underway for its construction. In the fall, we are planning to have the first water baptism for which all glory belongs to God. For the first time, our students served in the city of Kramatorsk in the Donetsk region of Ukraine. This city has a population of 166,000 people. They focused their efforts on creating an English club, which turned out to be a very fruitful and blessed ministry. 
the missionaries were able to form close relationships with many of the students. Most of those students began attending the youth services their instructors led. Twice a week, missionaries went out to evangelize on the streets. They would strike up conversations with those passing by about God. Through this ministry, many people prayed the prayer of salvation. The missionaries also regularly visited hospitals and prayed for total strangers in need of physical healing. They had special evenings set aside regularly for movies, tea times, and also events for youth. Wherever they went and whatever they did, their goal was to simply express and tell people about the love of God. This year, for the first time, our students went to the city of Kuybyshev, which is in the southern part of the Russian Federation near Volgograd. They worked together with Andrei Korotiev and his family, who are American missionaries from Washington State. The students initially had difficulty finding housing in the village of Kuybyshev and decided to move to Sredny Akhtuba. They ended up not finding anything there either and finally settled in Volsk. The blessing that came out of this was that the missionaries were able to work with people from all three cities. The main method for reaching out to that community was the English Club, which was held in the Children and Youth Center. The missionaries were in a completely new place and did not know anyone in the city. Therefore, the club became a great way to meet people. Classes were held in the mornings and in the evenings. Their fellowship was not limited to just the classroom setting. Through friendship and by being a good example, the missionaries were able to witness about Jesus Christ not only through words but with actions as well. On the weekends, they also had movie nights that ended in fellowship and discussions. Along with the students, they went to the countryside where, in a relaxed atmosphere, they were able to tell them about who Christians are and what the gospel really was. While the missionaries were leaving, they exchanged phone numbers and emails and have continued conversations and building relationships even while back in the U.S. We also visited people in the village of Kuibashov and the neighboring villages. These are people that have accepted Christ and we want to encourage them to read the Word of God and to fellowship with believers, to attend church so a church can be established here. While in Volgograd, our students were able to participate in evangelism through the Year for Jesus project. Joining together with local believers, our missionaries went from house to house and shared about the saving sacrifice of Christ. Many responded. While some did not, the seeds of God's Word were still sown and will give fruit in its time. Thank you for your service. I want to say right away that I am waiting for more people from SMBS to continue working because Russia is open. I don't know where God will place us next. We are missionaries, ourselves from Oregon, but we believe that God blesses those who are open to the Word of God. Another new point on the SMBS missionary map is the Russian city of Dzerzhinsky. It is located just a few miles from the country's capital of Moscow and has a population of about 50,000. During the first few weeks, our missionaries worked together with the musical group, The Message, and held evangelism services, invited people to concerts, and even worked with the children there. The missionaries also actively worked with the local pastor, Ivan Borichevsky, and helped with various events and services at that local church. Anyone who lives in a large city can attest to the fact that it can be much more challenging to make friends in those big cities and to begin conversations with people just on the street. So our missionaries decided to start an English club, one in Dzerzhinsky and one in the neighboring town of Korolyov. Through the English club, we have this chance, this opportunity to reach out to the local youth. We're going to make new friends, we're going to create new bonds, and give them an opportunity to, to have a new place that they can call home. Connecting them to the church, they will be able to find this gap, this emptiness that they felt in their lives. We would like to share with them the good things we have in our life and how we receive them. We receive them by having faith and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And through the English Club, we want to tell them how they can have the same experience. Classes were held twice a week in each location. We believe that through this close fellowship, the Word of God was not just sown in the lives of those students, but that it is taking root in their hearts. 
We now have many friends in Karalov where there are young people that want to learn English. And through this fellowship, we want to introduce them to Christ and tell them about Jesus because God has changed our lives. Thanks to the start of the English club, youth that otherwise would have never made it to our church, they came. We see this group is growing every time more youth joining in. I believe that because of the arrival of this team of students, it will be the start of a very strong youth ministry in our churches. I believe when we go to heaven, we will see that our work was not in vain. We will see the people saved. They will say, thanks to their prayers, their financial support, and their participation, I came and heard, and I was saved. Thank you. We love you. We also want to take some time and highlight the wonderful ministry called Roof of a Minister, led by Pastor Alexander Sindietsky in the Krasnodar region of Russia. Over the last 24 years, along with his church ministry, God has been using his servant, this pastor, in prison ministry. Throughout this time, services have been established in eight prisons and a rehabilitation center was opened for former convicts. This is tremendous work through which many have had the opportunity to get a second chance at life. But as is so often the case with families of ministers and church leaders, because of all the work that they do, they tend to neglect their own needs for the benefit of others. Pastor Alexander's family is no exception. The roof that has given shelter to this family and so many people in need over the years was leaking severely. There was a dire need to get it repaired and our brothers quickly responded. Their efforts and sincere desire to help became a tremendous testimony for their non-Christian neighbors. The Bible teaches us to help each other in word and in deed. Paul wrote to the Galatians, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. I would like to thank the brothers from my heart that God allowed us to meet those who came and had the opportunity to help us in this material way. I believe this is not our last chance to see each other. I think you will come again and serve in a different way in many churches. I would also like to thank the Missionary Bible School that supported this ministry. For the third time, the youth of Living Stream Church organized a missions trip to Mexico to collaborate with a missionary organization called Jesus is the Answer. Each year, SMBS graduates join this team. Our youth traveled from village to village, conducting up to three services a day, focusing on children who, in turn, brought their parents to the services. Through this method, many children and adults were able to hear the good news of the gospel. Interestingly, none of the events were advertised far in advance or in a special manner. However, within 30 minutes, many villagers would gather for the services. This demonstrates their deep hunger for the Word of God. Over the last several years now, our missionaries have served full-time in the village Girovogradskaya region, Zelonegai, Nikolaevskaya region, Kamarovka and Prohari, Chernigovskaya region. The Word of God continues to be preached and new people are accepting salvation. The missionaries held evangelism services and provided social assistance which resulted in many disadvantaged people getting the help they so desperately needed. Today we can testify that in Prohori, where just last year there was tremendous oppression from the local authorities, construction is underway for a church building and a home for the missionaries. This is all happening by the great mercy of God. Over the last three years, at the end of each summer, a reunion for all missionaries has been organized. This year, the meeting was held not far from Kiev. The main purpose of this gathering is to uplift missionaries who have been serving it for many years in Ukraine, to encourage those who are planning to stay for a prolonged period of time, and to inspire those who are heading back to the U.S. to return at some point in the future to Ukraine. This meeting was a great blessing to all missionaries. When we dedicate our lives to God, each Christian questions what their calling is. The Bible tells us that our calling is to carry the good news into the world. We thank all of our ministry partners, all those who stand with us in this vital task of spreading the gospel. 
we want to express our sincere gratitude to those who support us in word and in deed. With your prayers and financial support, people's lives have been changed, families have been restored, and souls have been healed.